world we live in, there's a constant emphasis on performing well. You may have noticed. <laughs> the equation often touted is performance expectations equal results plus actions and behavior. Well, this formula is how progress is evaluated. But what happens when this focus on performance seeps into our spiritual lives? Well, it's important to explore how this performance-driven mentality impacts our relationship with God and our sense of worth. Welcome in to Life as God Intended. I'm Don, and I'm delighted that you've joined me for another broadcast. And in today's broadcast, we'll be discussing escaping the performance trap and finding freedom in Christ. But don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you are a regular guest on this particular broad uh, channel, please share it with your friends so that others might be edified and encouraged with this truthful discovery of Christ as our life. So let's talk about escaping from performance. The world system is perpetually concerned with your performance responsibility. That's what you do or what you don't do and how it aligns with the expectations that have been set up by the authority figures that you find yourself under. And this pressure even extends to the church as well. You may have noticed upon joining the church community that you encounter similar expectations from the church authority figures about your responsibilities as a Christian. And this can be both demanding and restrictive, potentially leading to a legalistic view of your spiritual duties, which they're all too happy to tell you what they are. <laughs> now imagine the pressure of trying to meet all the expectations that are placed upon you, whether it's at work, at home, or even in your spiritual life. It's exhausting, and it can lead to feelings of inadequacy and failure. You might feel like you're constantly falling short, never quite measuring up to the standard set by others or even yourself. Relentless pursuit of performance can steal your joy and peace, leaving you feeling burdened and defeated. You know, beyond the church, we face expectations from others and ourselves every day. Success is often defined by fulfilling these expectations. The good news is, however, the cross of Christ eradicated all human expectations of success. That's right. Whether in your marriage, your parenting, or your vocational achievements, as Christians, we should recognize that neither we nor the world are called to better themselves in a worldly sense. I want you to listen to the Apostle Paul's reminder to us in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8. But what things were gained to me, Paul says, those I count loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do not count them, or, or, or I should say, and do count them, 
but dung, that I may win Christ. Those are some pretty powerful words by the apostle. Uh, count them by, but, but, but by dung would kind of be, in our vernacular, cow manure. You see, this perspective shifts our focus from worldly success to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ and participating with him. As mentioned, expectations create a performance trap. The issue in our Christian life is not about performing, but about experiencing life as God intended. You see, character expression rooted in Christ surpasses any human expectation. Christians are called to walk by faith, living out of the life of Christ and deriving their character from Him. Christ's character will exceed all human expectations. You need not worry about coming up short as you're participating with Jesus. I want you to reflect on Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, this verse highlights the essence of our Christian life. It's Christ living in and through us, not our efforts or performances. The only measurement that matters is Jesus Christ. And he is not assessing our performance or our progress on some kind of a religious scale. No, our Christian life is based not on what we do, but on what we are allowing him to do, what he has already accomplished based on John chapter 19 and verse 30, the finished work of the cross. And he continues to do in us by his grace. Listen to the Apostle Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God. We're deriving adequacy. It's flowing out of us as we walk by faith, participating with God's grace activity. Everything God desires to do in us, He provides the ability to accomplish. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5.24 is saying. Faithful is He who calls you, and He also will bring it to pass. <laughs> I love that verse. Our only expectation should be Romans 11.36. Are you ready? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. In conclusion, Christ's character will always exceed human expectations. Therefore, by you and I focusing on living out of the life of Christ rather than performing to meet expectations, we find true freedom and fulfillment. Let us shift our focus from human expectations to experiencing life as God intended, allowing His grace and character to be our guide and our strength. Embrace the freedom found in Christ, in your identity in Christ, where our worth is not tied to our performance, 
but it is rooted in his unchanging love and grace. This is the path to genuine peace and joy in our spiritual journey. Thanks for tuning in and for leaving your comments in the comment section below.